I'm Rene Ritchie, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you why I am just beyond super excited about the potential for a new 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pro. Running Apple Silicon with mini LED, Face ID, USB 4, 5G, Wi Fi 6, and much, much more. And I'm gonna tell you about it right now. Sponsored by Brilliant. According to YouTube, between 60 and 70% of you watching still haven't subscribed. So go ahead, hit that button and bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming Apple Silicon coverage. Okay, so when Phil Schiller debuted the current MacBook Pro design back in 2016, it was every bit as industry shocking an event as when Steve Jobs pulled the original MacBook Air out of that manila envelope, just for completely different reasons. It was thinner and lighter because of course it was, but it was also absolutely bereft of any of the traditional ports. MagSafe, gone. USB-A, gone. HDMI, SD, gone, gone. Only the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack remained and it was just glaring, terrified at what was about to happen to the iPhone. In those ports places were two to four USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 plugs, the future of interconnectivity, meaning everyone in the present would just have to book a one-way ticket straight to Dongle Town. Sorry, pedants, sorry. A dongle is for copy protection. I know, I know. Adapterville, population, all of us. But more on ports in a scalding hot minute. What wasn't as apparent right away was that the then new MacBook Pros were also bereft of something else. Their beloved, beloved scissor switch keyboards. Those were gone too, and in their place were the immediately more divisive and soon to be much more controversial butterfly switch keyboards. And then there was a the touch bar. Yeah, but I'll get to all of that in a minute as well. First, we just have to talk about the models themselves. There was a new low-end, no touch bar model meant to fill the gap for MacBook Air upgraders who wanted a Retina Air. But there was no high-end, no battleship model meant for pros who essentially wanted a portable desktop. Now, objectively, a lot of people loved those MacBooks Pro. Apple sold a metric ton of them, a Kelvin ton of them. There are tons in the Kelvin universe, sure. Anyway, that was to a new customer base, a new generation who self-identified as pros and who wanted to brand identify with the word pro on the box, but also really did want something still light, still thin. And the high-end pros were high key not happy about it, like 2013 Mac Pro not happy about it at all. Now, Apple appeased those high-end pros with the new high-end modular Mac Pro in 2019. And as much as I would love, all caps love to see what that team, that beautiful ILM and Pixar fed pro workflows team could do with a modular MacBook Pro concept, one where you could swap out processing units and accelerators, hot swap power cores, just be every high end hobbyist, high end dream. I don't see that happening on our earth. Maybe earth too, but definitely not this one. Those just aren't the types of MacBooks Pro Apple wants to make or believes they can sell at anything approaching sustainable scale. I mean, it's incredibly easy for any blogger, podcaster, YouTuber to spend just all of Apple's money. Homer Simpson's carring up a completely unrealistic, unaffordable hodgepodge of a product, particularly since none of us would be in charge of shipping it. So for this, I'm gonna to try to stick with the direction Apple seems to be going already and the technologies that are available already. In other words, there's a Mac Pro on wheels for that. Let's get to this. Now, what Apple did was first regress back to older, less efficient memory technologies and try to retrofit the thermals, thanks Intel, and then beef up the batteries to support it all and then ship the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which may be our best possible indicator yet as to the direction Apple's going in the future. I just think they got it out ahead of Apple Silicon because they wanted to do right or at least writer, by the traditional high-end pros before Apple Silicon. So what happens next? Well, hit that like button and let's dive into it. The current MacBooks Pro already have a damn fine display. Retina density, P3 wide color gamut, true tone dynamic color temperature matching. Hell, the 16 inch even has a refresh rate you can toggle between 48 and 60 Hertz. So your movie like or TV like video looks properly movie like or TV like. But there are still a few technologies, new and iPad and Mac alike that Apple could draw on for the next generation. I mean, after they finish just blowing out the bezels and going full on 14 inch to match the 16 inch, of course, not a monster. The first is mini LED. That's the new display technology that uses thousands of tiny 200 micron LEDs, 
grouped into local dimming zones to make displays with deeper blacks and contrast ratios much closer to OLED, but without the burn-in and off-axis color shifts and other problems just inherent to OLED. That should let it get close to, if not full-on, HDR support for both video watching and video making. The second is adaptive refresh. That's what the iPad Pro line has used since 2017 to ramp up refresh rate to 120 hertz for silky smooth scrolling, but also ramp it down to 60 hertz and 48 hertz, like the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but automatically to save power and show TV and movies at the proper frame rates nature and Hollywood just intended. Now, Apple hasn't done promotion on OLED yet because it still messes with the color management and seeing the white point change as the refresh rate changes is just, it's just a showstopper. But mini LED is closer to LCD in terms of how it works. So just all the high frame rate fingers crossed on that one. The third is a nano texture option. That debuted in 2019 with the Pro Display XDR, but has just now come to the last Intel iMac as well. Instead of a matte coating, which diffuses reflections but reduces contrast as well, this actually etches the glass to disrupt those reflections while maintaining as much of the contrast as possible. And it looks straight up gorgeous. So good, I can't even imagine how much better a MacBook Pro display with all of those characteristics would look but I very much want to find out. Now, I know some people are looking at macOS Big Sur with that newly, nicely padded out interface and just drenching themselves with hope for multi-touch support as well. Maybe even just Apple Pencil support. And all I can say is expect it when you see it. The 2016 MacBook Pro was designed with Intel actually hitting their die shrink goals in mind and on time. Yet here we are in 2020 and they're still shipping 14 nanometer and just throwing more hotter cores at all of their problems. Not so with Apple Silicon though. That could not only debut with the new ARM V9 instruction set architecture, or ISA, but on Taiwan Semiconductor's new five nanometer process as well. And that'll give Apple not just a ton of silicon budget to work with, but a couple of different options for this particular member of the new system on a chip family. The first would be to keep roughly the same performance, but extend out the battery life. The second would be to keep roughly the same battery life and just blowout performance. And I just know everyone is gonna have like eight different opinions on both of those possibilities. So please feel free to just yell at me in the comments. But here's mine. For an ultra portable like the MacBook Air, battery life should absolutely be the priority. For an ultra powerful like the MacBook Pro though, performance should be the priority. And that's assuming Apple doesn't do something especially fancy, like switch between power and efficiency modes depending on whether you're plugged in or on battery, with an opt-out toggle, of course, for the real road warriors who just want to watch the whole thing burn right down. Since Johnny Saruji, who runs Apple Silicon, specifically said SOCs, as in single chips with CPU and GPU sandwiched together, that would seem to rule out even AMD being along for the discrete graphics ride. In other words, custom Apple Silicon just all the way down. But I do wonder if we could see something like the Afterburner ASIC card that was introduced with the new Mac Pro, even if only on the new 16 inch model, something to accelerate ProRes, potentially much more. And who knows, maybe that lets the 14 inch model ship fanless for those pros who really do want an ultra quiet option on their ultra powerful MacBook as well. Beyond that, Apple has already hinted at custom acceleration for hypervisor in their systems on a chip. That would make virtual machines run faster, much closer to native speeds. But really, Apple could make custom accelerators for anything, anything they wanna just absolutely crush when it comes to performance. Basically, think of something a pro would worry about being slow on Apple Silicon, and then imagine Apple specifically making silicon to make it run just ridiculously fast. Current Macs have an Apple T2 quote unquote security chip which is really more like an Apple A10 Fusion in coprocessor form. In addition to handling a bunch of encryption, signal processing, controller and accelerator tasks, it also handles Touch ID on the MacBook line. But with Apple Silicon, there'd no longer be a need for a coprocessor, not when the main SOC can easily handle all of that in an even more modern, more advanced form. That means a secure enclave for Touch ID built right in, of course, but also an ANE, an Apple neural engine, which just happens to be what Face ID depends on as well. And as much as I like me some Touch ID, the idea of just lifting the lid on a MacBook Pro and having Face ID see me, match me, and unlock me, well, that would be like Windows Hello on Hulk Serum Fantastic. Now, I realize some of you would still prefer Touch ID because you feel like the extra action serves as an extra confirmation, an extra error prevention, and sure. Though I imagine Apple will handle that the way they've already handled it on iPhone and iPad, but 
Say it with me now. Por qué no le dos? Because as you all know, multi-biometrics remains my nerdiest, nerdiest dreams for just all of Apple's devices. So far, Apple has entirely avoided Wi-Fi 6 on the Mac line while embracing it early, eagerly even on the iPhone and iPad. There have been some issues with some implementations in the past, though it's entirely possible Apple wanted to wait for their own custom silicon before bringing it to the Mac. Either way, this seems like one of the safest bets in the business right now. 5G cellular networking, on the other hand, well, that could be seen as most valuable on an ultra portable, like the MacBook Air. But once Apple goes to all the trouble of making both the Mac hardware and operating system cellular capable and efficient, it's almost certainly something the pro market would appreciate having as an option as well, even if it's a Qualcomm costly option, especially in the future when Apple starts to integrate their own custom modems into their own custom silicon. It's also interesting to think about Apple supersetting things like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, sort of like what they've already done with the AirPods for audio. For example, custom silicon and radio technology to make AirDrop even faster and more reliable between Apple devices. The only real limit here is what the teams have time to work on any given year. So let me know what you want to see in the comments. I want more ports on the MacBook Pro, but like Get Shorty, I don't feel one way or another about it. See, Apple's philosophy is not to include anything in the hardware that most people won't use most of the time. In other words, anything niche gets a dongle. Sorry, an adapter. I'm assuming the current two or four USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 ports will just become two or four USB-4 slash Thunderbolt 4 ports. And I'm legit hoping Apple dumps the two from the Pro lineup and standardizes on four across the lineup because Pro. I'm assuming they'll keep the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well for Pro audio work, though that thing has got to be just shifting bricks right now looking at the iPhone Pro and iPad Pro, anything Pro. But once you get into the higher end Pro stuff, the rest doesn't matter as much because you're not just dealing with 3.5 millimeter and HDMI and SDXC anymore. No, you're dealing with XLR and SDI and CF Express, and you're just accepting that you will never live that dongle free life. And yeah, I said it because you're not my dongle dad. So what I guess I'm saying is that I'm fine with four times USB four. Just please include those new braided cables in the box because pro gear, it should last. Confession, I use the touch bar. It's still the fastest way to scrub through everything from timelines to tabs on macOS. But I fully realize I may be in the minority. And according to Apple's own manifesto, and what I'm assuming is the second law of metaphysics, nothing unused by most people most of the time should exist. So if Apple is determined to keep it, they should improve it. It's been going on four years now. Where's our Taptic engine already? How can they take away force press and replace it with long press if they haven't even given us force press yet? Like I said in my ASI MacBook Air video, I know a few people still miss the stability of the butterfly keys and others the absolute clickety clackety unit that was ye old MacBook keyboards of yore. But the current scissor switch MacBook keyboard is either the best compromise or just the best of both worlds, at least until the whole thing is replaced with a virtual adaptive taptic surface. Kidding, a little. The new speakers and mics on the 16 inch MacBook Pro are just aces. And I realize Apple can't cram all of that into a new 14 inch, but by cramming as much as possible, I'll just consider it a solved problem for now. They're all shades of great. Apple has been doing something really interesting. They've been letting the high end prices creep up to subsidize newer display and silicon and security and other technologies. But then once those new technologies have been paid down, they've been pushing them down to increasingly affordable models as well. iPhone 10 to iPhone SE iPad Pro to iPad 10.2, Apple Watch 5 to Apple Watch 3 Redux. And my hope slash guess is we'll see something similar on the ASI Mac side. Meaning, I don't expect much of anything in the way of cost savings for the MacBook Pro line. I fully expect Apple to spend every dollar saved to bring even newer, even better tech into that line. In other words, more features at the same price. But then, then, I expect to see that tech get paid down and pushed down into a new generation of more affordable MacBooks non-pro. That way, the average selling price or ASP stays roughly the same, but the value increases at both ends for both types of customers. Win-win. Apple just has to do the math and figure it all out. And lucky for them, Brilliant's got a whole new math course library. So anyone, anyone can brush up on the fundamentals. Probability, algebra, calculus, trigonometry, differential equations and geometry, all the math for school, 
for work, for fun, for running all the numbers on all the things Apple does. Brilliant's a website and app with over 60 interactive courses in math, science, computer science, logic and deduction, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, cryptocurrency, and just so much more. It's based on problem solving and active learning. It's about seeing concepts visually and interacting with them and then answering questions that get you to think. And the courses are laid out like a story and broken down into pieces so that you can tackle them a little bit at a time. There are no tests and no grades. Just pick a course based on what you're interested in and get started. And if you make a mistake, literally who cares? Just check out the explanation to find out more. Go to brilliant.org slash Richie and sign up for free. Just click on the link in the description or go to brilliant.org slash Richie and the first 200 of you can also level up with 20% off the annual premium subscription. And clicking on that link really helps out the channel. Thanks Brilliant. Thanks to all of you for your support. Check out my Apple Silicon playlist for much, much more and see you next video.